welcome to worship here at First Christian Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. It is our joy to welcome you to this time of worship and reflection on God's Word. We are joined as usual today by our music director, Mark Miller, and by our wonderful videographer and lay leader today, Kelly Carroll. So we are so glad that you have come to join us to reflect on God's Word and how it calls and invites us today. We invite you to continue following us on our Facebook page at FCCLincoln.org and on our Instagram and Facebook pages. We are consistent about putting our updates and do invite you to continue to check those just to have the most updated information. We are still continuing our public worship on Sundays, so we will also be having public worship this coming Sunday, the 21st of June at 10.30 a.m., and we open our doors at 10.15 and invite you to come uh, with your mask and ready to do a little physical distancing, but it is well worth it to have uh, some time together if you are ready and feel comfortable for that. But we're glad also to be able to offer you this time of worship online and hope that in whichever way you come before God's presence, that it is meaningful and that it feeds your soul. We invite you now to open your hearts as we listen to God's Word. A reading of Psalm 86, a prayer of David. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. For to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving maid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. probably noticed if you've been attending First Christian for a while that I'm pretty partial to the Psalms. The Psalter is kind of my go-to book and it's it's the powerful and, and poetic expression of the human condition that I admire most in this particular book, the Bible. When I struggle or when in doubt, it seems to be the book that I turn to because I think the psalmist expresses the human condition in such poetic and lyrical language far better than anything I could come up with. And our psalm today, Psalm 86, is no exception. One of my professors and noted biblical scholar Bernard Anderson writes a book, Out of the Depths, the Psalms for Today, and he reminds us that this psalm, Psalm 86, is categorized as a psalm of lament. He goes on to remind us that the Psalms of Lament are the most numerous in the Psalter. So 
I guess that tells us a little something about the human condition as well. It reminds us that when we call this a psalm of lament, it's not what we might initially think. We might think, oh, a lament, that sounds so pessimistic and so negative. And he reminds us, though, that the psalm of lament was actually had its foundation in a trust and confidence in God's presence. It wasn't intended as some pessimistic, navel-gazing process of just looking at all the bad things in life, but it was intended as a way to express the, the human condition with that hope and confidence in God's presence and intervention. Anderson reminds us that the people of Israel to whom the Psalms were originally written often found themselves kind of in this interim position, this kind of living out and hearing the promises of God, and yet living in a time in which they seemed to be unfulfilled. So often the Israelite, the ancient Israelites, found themselves in a time and a place when they trusted in the promises of God, but they hadn't seen them actualized yet. And so they were in that time of eager anticipation and waiting. I suspect for many of us today, we find ourselves in a very similar place. We are very confident and aware of God's promises to us, but very conscious that life is in a holding pattern in many ways, and that we too find ourselves in that interim space between God's promises and its fulfillment. It seems to me more pressing than ever that we rely on the psalmist to help us deal with the experiences we have today, and perhaps that's its attraction, is that the words seem timeless, that they speak to us in our situation even centuries later. This psalm is categorized as one as a personal lament, and it's one in which the psalmist shares their own personal struggle and their confidence in God's presence. Anderson lists up for us kind of a, a general structure that fits most of the Psalms of Lament, and I think it, it provides a great guideline for us as we develop our own Psalms, our own Psalms of Lament. There are really five or six kind of categories or, or sections of most of the Psalms of Lament. They all begin with an address, with calling out to God, which is how we all begin our prayers, whether it's public or private our address to God. And then the psalmist moves on to the kind of begins the meat of the matter by sharing their complaint. Sometimes it's a personal complaint, as it is with this psalmist. Sometimes, since they were songs meant for public worship, it was a complaint of a community. Whatever it was, it was an honest willingness to share what was in their hearts and to share the complaints and concerns they had. Then there's often a sense of confession of trust or a realization that even in the midst of these complaints, that God is faithful, that God is attentive to the prayers of our hearts and our voices, and that God hears us. But then there's another section in which the psalmist lays out their petitions. So often, I think, in prayer, it's challenging for us to share with God what it is we really want. And part of the prayer process, I think, is not just being centered on this place of complaint, but thinking about what is it that we want to see happen? What, are, what kind of outcome are we yearning for? So often in the personal Psalms of Lament, the psalmist wants healing or help. The psalmist wants rescue from their enemies. They are very concrete about what it is they are hoping God will. In this process of sharing our complaint and our petition, it's so critical that we allow ourselves to be aware of what's happening in our hearts and our minds. I was reminded yesterday as I participated in a, a Zoom meeting on pastoral resilience, how very important it is for us to share our feelings. I know you're out there saying, well, come on, Pastor Karen, that's like a no-brainer. But somehow it seems that I, like everyone else, sometimes forget how important it is to acknowledge and express the feeling that we're feeling. 
We strive to do this in constructive ways, but it's so important in the prayer of lament that we share all the feelings that well up within in us, knowing that God has given us the full range of human feelings and does not shy away from hearing them. In this time of pandemic and protest, it's so often easy to believe that our feelings are not valued or do not matter, and so sometimes they come out sideways in violence and anger that is hard to address and a struggle to listen to. And so the psalmist reminds us in this process how very important it is that we share the full range of our feelings and experiences and that we share our hope for desires. And then, of course, as the psalm draws to an end, the psalmist again reaffirms a confidence and trust in God and ends, generally, most of these psalms end with a vow of praise and celebration for God. It is a challenging process, but I think looking at the structure of the psalm of lament can be helpful to us in our own personal prayer, especially in these challenging times. Of course, the reality, as I think the psalmist would acknowledge, is that we share our petitions and our hopes for certain outcomes, but we have to acknowledge and realize that our prayers don't always come out the way we would hope that they would. But the foundation of the prayer of lament is the recognition that God hears our prayers and that God intercedes with compassion us, maybe not in all the ways we would hope, but that God is attentive to our prayers and that guides us. And often as we move through this process of prayer, we may find that our desires and petitions shift and change as God opens our hearts. I invite us in these challenging days to allow ourselves, as the psalmist did, to share our lament. We can do so confident that God hears us and loves us. We can share our complaints freely before God, knowing that God acknowledges that, and part of the prayer process is our self-acknowledgement as well. But we can do it because we trust in God, and we know that God hears our petitions, our prayers, and our dreams. May we be empowered as individuals to share in our prayer of lament. And may we be empowered as people of faith to know that as communities, we share in lament as well. The power of lament is that God hears us and loves us and empowers us to move forward. Amen. <laughs> Now I invite you to join your hearts with mine in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can bring our prayers of lament to you. We are grateful, O oh God, that you hear our prayers, that you listen with compassion, and that you respond. We are empowered, O oh God, to share our laments with you because we do know, as the hymn says, it is well with my soul. We can share those things that burden our hearts and our minds because it is well with our soul, O oh God, and you are with us. In these challenging days, we pray especially for all the things that swirl around us and within us. 
for all the feelings that are stirred up and that may frighten us from time to time. We give you thanks so that we may share the fullness of those with you. There is so much anger and fear that swirls around us in our country and our world today. Empower us as you do to listen to one another, to hear the cries of our brothers and sisters, to acknowledge the injustice that is in our nation and world. And empower us, O oh God, as we share these complaints, as we lay our laments before you, empower us to move forward in action to promote love and justice. O oh God, we pray for so many in need this day. We think of those in our faith community here at First Christian, in our city, our state, and our world who call upon you in need. For all those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, we lift them to your healing presence. For all those who struggle with the isolation and loneliness that has been a part of these past few months, we pray that you would help them to know they are not truly alone, but that you are with them. Empower us to be with one another, to share our love for each other, whether it's in a telephone call, a note sent, or an email shared. And empower us as we share our laments with you to be confident in your love and your presence. We lift all these prayers to you, O oh God, knowing that you hear our prayer and supplication. And now, in the silence and presence of our own hearts, we share together in the prayer of your Lord, our Lord Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And once again, as we close our worship this week, we invite you to continue to follow us on our webpage, fcclincoln.org, and on our Facebook page and Instagram. And if you feel inclined to join us, we will be worshiping, having public worship this coming Sunday on the 21st of June. It is a joy to have you with us. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship and power of the Holy Spirit Abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.